Because that I even got lost where I was up to. We're up to our next question now, which we will we will do. Uh, is Tom in the room? Do you know? Is Tom here? <laughs> no. I made the mistake of telling people I'd ask the question as well if they didn't want to. So it looks like that's yeah. what I'm going to be doing for a while. Better not tell them next time. <laughs> Um, given the focus of some on roads, rates and rubbish, what priority do candidates give to fire hazard reduction programs and flood mitigation works? Mark, you're first up. Yeah. Yeah, so the council um, doesn't actually um, uh, like run the fire brigade, but the council does provide some funding to rural fire service and that sort of thing. Generally, like when people are wealthy, they can deal with anything that the, the, the climate throws at them. The Lismore floods were terrible two years ago. Five people were killed tragically, and 31,000 people were displaced. In 2008, I worked in overseas aid, and there was Cyclone Nargis over in Burma. Over 150,000 people were killed. They stopped counting because it was too embarrassing to the communist dictatorship government. And over a million people displaced, and they had absolutely nothing. And floods and natural disasters, when you're poor, are absolutely devastating. When you're wealthy, you can more be equipped to deal with it, to prevent it, or to recover from it. The trouble with the, the climate cult is they want to make us all poor and less resilient to the climate. Lauren. Thank you. So, look, I guess it depends on the land tenure, but I've certainly, since getting onto council in 2022, kicked off and at every opportunity uh, suggested that uh, flood studies, updating our flood studies should be a priority, uh, the climate modelling for the fires that we experience should be a priority, that we should set that as a, as a, as a base layer. Um, council does things like asset protection zones, which I think have recently changed names. We had a SIM table which went out to all the towns and villages in our community to uh, educate people about the behaviour of fire and that was something that was produced through the Mid-North Coast Joint Organisation. The council is a part of, so that came and visited our, our towns and villages. That's also now moving into flood modelling, so it can be used in the same way, um, educative um, approach for the community. Uh, so, look, it really depends on the land tenure, uh, but. You know, council is working in this space, and the Mid North Coast Joint Organisation certainly has a big focus on resilience. And there is a, a staff member, a paid staff member, there uh, to, to do more in that space for us. Nick. Thank you very much. Um, so, if you're not aware, fire or fuel reduction burns are primarily, primarily a state government responsibility. Uh, landowners also need to be responsible. Uh, council does have a public land procedure. Uh, that all requests for asset protection works via hazard reduction birds are to be forwarded to council in writing or over the phone or via the uh, reporter hazard page on council's website. Of course, we saw what happened in 2019, so yes, it is a priority already. The state government, uh, through the, the Department of Climate Change, Energy, the Environment and Water, in conjunction with the SES, uh, play a massive role in managing flood risk statewide before, during, and after floods. And as we've seen in the past, council also plays a significant role in terms of providing experienced staff and local area knowledge. Uh, council, yes, has a duty of care to manage land subject to flooding. Uh, drainage systems must work, and development of the land should be minimal, as you would expect in flood zones. So yes, to uh, the question about uh, hazard reduction burns and flood mitigation works, yes, it is a council priority, but working in conjunction with others. Thank you.